What's up, everybody? Adam here, Blacktop Smack Talk. Special, special day. Special day. Uh, we got a special guest in the house, man. But first and foremost, I'd love to introduce my partners, my crew, my guys. We got Charlie Hustle in the house. Hey, now. What up, what up? And we have Sano on Zoom today. Taking Bruce's spot digitally. Yes, and you know, shout out to Bruce. He's doing his his coaching thing. Uh, currently coming back from Hawaii. His his team got a national championship D two for cross country. cross country. So shout out to Bruce Academy of Art. Yes, in the Bay Area, they do man. sports too there, <laughs> not just art. Right. So you know, we're coming to you live from Third Wheel Podcast Studios over in Seattle. Shout out to our guy Blake helping us out today, but. The reason why we're here, Charlie, we have a legend in the building. From the doghouse? From the doghouse. You know, you see the shirt without the lint. You see the shirt? Shout out to my son, Marcus, for letting me borrow this or <laughs> letting him take it. Man, we got Garfield legend, fellow class of 2002 guy, um, and just Seattle legend overall, man. One of the most underrated, in my opinion. I think we talked about this a lot. One of the most underrated players in Seattle history is Marcellus Kemp. What What's up, though? <laughs> what up, dog? Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate hey, man, that. You, you know, you and me talk, man, I always, you know, I'm always letting you know how, how I feel, you mm -hmm, know what I mean? Sure. But uh, we appreciate you coming out. Uh, man, so we just wanted to, first and foremost, how's, how is everything, man? How's, how's man, life treating you? Man, life is good right now, man. You know, I'm married, been married for three years. Yeah. You know, um, just, uh, you know, being a family guy, family dad, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, life's good so far, bro. Oh, man, that's you know? good. Enjoying it. That's good, man. You know, was, we had the the pandemic, you know, which is an unfortunate time. But it was also a time where we also got to kind of put things in perspective, got to spend time with our families, our loved ones, got to spend, do a lot of things that we probably wouldn't normally do, man. Like when you was when the pandemic hit and things were kind of shut down, what was a day in the life looking like for you? Um, man, um, a lot of homeschooling, you know, for my oh, son, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, my wife was doing a lot of that, uh, the bulk of that and just, um, you know, stick with my family, watching a lot of the news, um, staying healthy, um, yeah. you know, staying eating right and just, you know, just, you know, staying healthy, bro, pretty much mm -hmm. and staying close to the family pretty much, bro. Definitely. Definitely, mm -hmm. man. So, you know, uh, I don't really know. If you done podcasts or interviews or anything like that, so if you haven't, this is a great opportunity for your followers, some of your fans who still, you know, for your fans overseas or in Nevada, so get a chance to know you and get to know your story about your career. So, man, we're just gonna dive into it. Let's do um, it. Yeah. So yeah, Sano. Yeah, I mean, I was kind. Of, I mean, I'm kind of curious. Just like, uh, I mean, going way back. Like growing up, how I mean, did you did, were you always basketball or like were there other sports you played or like uh, when did you kind of figure out that you know basketball was going to take you places? Um, take me places maybe uh, elementary school because that's when it was taking me places. You know AAU ball. You know that's when okay. I figured out that wow I can uh, travel outside of Seattle and um, you know play games. But even long before that, um, like four or five years old. Um, you know, it started out with the, you know, the, um, the breakaway, uh, basket oh, in, the, yeah. in the living room, you know, yeah. Yeah. playing yeah. those. And then after that, for me, um, obviously like, you know, the gyms, but the milk crate, I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys ever did it. Oh, yep. mm -hmm. I didn't start off having a basketball hoop at my house, um, in elementary. So I used a uh, milk crate. I loved the basketball that much. So if yeah. when I was going to the parks at nighttime, I'll play in a milk crate. And hold my shooting skills like on uh, on a milk crate. Okay, you know what I mean. That's where the wetter came from. <laughs> Man, you feel me? <laughs> and then, um, you know, from there, you know, um, uh, you know, elementary, then middle school, and then that's when I, was, I went to South Shore Middle School. Oh, okay. And man, a lot of a lot of hoopers came out of there. I told uh, you. The twins. Um, who else Demar Basey. Basey. Yeah. Uh, yep. Randy West, R.I.P. Um, some other good players. Nate went there too, right? Wasn't nah, Nate went oh. to uh, Ace and Mercer, I oh, believe. Oh, Ace Mercer. Okay. But we played them, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, and so South Shore is where I learned some schools as well. 
but you know, I was saying a lot. Um, but before middle school, it was the click. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How can I forget about the click? Yeah. R. P. To Coach Prince, Prince Moore. Um, that's where like the basics came. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, before practice, he would have us run like twenty times around the gym. You know, make sure we was always in condition. He had us all aligned, um, wearing the same things right. from head to toe, um, practicing hard. Um, but I learned uh, that things can go kind of hard, kind of tough for me. You know, mm-hmm. I learned that um, that I wasn't a player who who excelled at the yelling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Coach Prince was known for yelling, but I appreciated that it happened so early because um, in college. I had a kind of Trent Johnson, oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. who was there before he went to Stanford. He was kind of had that same kind of um, demeanor, yelling, okay. and but I was, I mean, I was prepared for it then. Right, right. right. So I know I said a lot in that time, but well, that's right. good. You're good. You know what I mean? You good. Um, who was it? Terry Berry went there too, right? Oh yeah, Terry Berry. Because I, I was a year. I played Terry for. Berry. I played for Eckstein. Oh, did you? Okay. And when I was in eighth grade, you were probably in seventh grade, and we played you guys, and mm-hmm. I was like, dang man. Terry Berry had all the bounce. Yeah, it was. It was. It was Demar. <laughs> And, mm-hmm. and Terry Berry, I was like, man, yeah, that was. Uh, I think we played you guys like in an unofficial game because we went undefeated, okay. but we never got to play you guys. And then you guys smoked us. Okay, I was yeah. like, okay, I thought, <laughs> we thought we were running shit, and it was like, yeah. okay, because like McClure, Washington, everything. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, I still remember uh, Terry Berry from uh, Nathan Hale JV when we played, uh, yeah, uh, Beach. Okay, when the cl- the clock broke and, and a game, we just played the game of booties broke out in the, in the middle, middle of the, of the, of the JV game. <laughs> <laughs> Hoopers, yeah. Terry, I think Terry Berry had like what thirty three that game. He had, yeah, he had hella. Like Something ridiculous. He was a grown man. Years. Yeah. Um. So was it? So getting into high school, was it always going to be Garfield? Was there any other? Any like, was you ever going to be Franklin or, or Nathan Hale or, or something or Beast? Because he was right South Shore's right there. Yeah. yeah, bro. Like, I was supposed I was supposed to go to Beach because okay. um. There were some apartments right across from Beach, like um, you know, kind of. We said the projects, like yeah, um, yeah. I stayed in those, and so and I was just going there from you know from middle school, and then from middle school I was supposed to go to Beach. A lot of my cousins went there. Yeah, yeah. My mom even went there, but um, my dad went to uh, Garfield when he when he went there. So I was like, man, I'm going to Garfield. Okay. I kind of wanted to get away from you know the players I played with, the Twins, Renner Beach. Yeah, yeah. I love those guys, but I wasn't trying to be in one litter fighting for you know a spot, right. fighting right, for right, a shot. Right, right. You know what yeah. I mean? So I went to Garfield. Okay. And, and, you know, it worked out. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. So also growing up in the 90s in Seattle, how many times did you get asked if you were related to Sean? Still to this day. A- every, yeah, right. It's never uh, going to stop. Right. <laughs> never. That's, to the, you that's know? crazy. <laughs> um, so uh, growing up, like who are some, maybe some, like, you know, players older than us in the town that you kind of like looked up to if there was anyone, like, you know, whether it was a Jamal or like a older than that, like a Jerry Petty or someone like yeah. that? Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember this this player. Um, His name was Cavassier. I don't oh, know if you, uh-uh. Uh-huh. Have you have you heard of I him? I heard of the name. I heard of the name. I don't remember too much about, him, but the, the name rings a bell. Yeah, Cavassier. Like, um, he played for this team called the Magic. I okay. Know, because, and he played like Penny Hardaway, bro. He's. Ooh. I remember seeing him going to the, like, the old Rainier Rainier Community Center, and he was just man killing point guard, just killing. That was the first play. I was like, man, this guy's nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I always think about him to this day. Did you know he what play mean? high school anywhere? See, that's the thing. He, I, he was like just a like a hood player. Yeah, you know he's what I mean? one of those cats, man. Just, just, just like yeah. he, he, if he kept going, he probably would have made it. But you know, things happened along the way that kind of yeah, deterred yeah. it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Damn, that's crazy. What about so who, when you were growing up? Who was like your favorite players in the league? Penny. Nah, Kobe. Oh, Kobe. Oh, yeah. it was Kobe. Yeah. Kobe Bryant for yeah. sure. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. Kobe for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the man. Uh, so when you did you make varsity as a freshman at Garfield? Nah, so my freshman year, um, I played JV. Mm-hmm. Um, then you know, kill. did my thing on there, oh, kill. Shit. Yeah, uh, it was fun. And then my sophomore year, um, you know, I was expected to play varsity. Yeah. And so, I don't know if it was the first or second game. Um, there was not a, there was many minutes for me to play. You know, I was behind Roy Dale well, Smiley, I mean, the whole obviously. Squad, oh, that the was whole a, squad, I yeah. squad going crazy. So you had Black, you had Trey, you had everybody. Yep. Yeah. So man, after one of the games, I told Coach like, man. Varsity, varsity is not for me this year. Like I told Coach Floyd that. I said, man, put me on JV so at least I can play, get my reps up, and I'll come practice. You know what I mean? I was just a rat player. Smart, smart man. Though. Bro, I didn't want to sit and I just wanted to just play, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's repetition. I just knew that yeah. repetition is going to get me ready mentally, physically, you know what I mean? And so he agreed. He thought it was a smart decision. And then my sophomore year went crazy again. And then, you know, next year I was Damn. poised to go. That's crazy. Yep. So, like, when you guys made state or whatever, that did you get called up? Did you get any minutes then that sophomore year? Or it was still the team was so loaded. Yeah, it was still loaded, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I'd even 
I think Michael I, Thompson. I think I got caught up one. Yeah, Michael Thompson for he sure. Transferred in from Ballard. From Ballard, um, one game I got caught up, but other than that, bench. Right. Yeah, yep. I'm familiar with that. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I think yeah. we all. I think we yeah. all are. Hey uh, man. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So with those teams being on those teams, and having maybe some of the most talent in the state, and not getting that chip, what was that? Was there like was there frustration with that, or you know, because it was like, man, Garfield's the best team out here. You man, know? it was always frustration. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, and that came with a lot of um, pressure, you know, because we was always picked to win it. Yeah. Um. But man, I just one year that for sure I know he's gonna win. This year I got hurt. We lost to. Um, was that your was Lincoln? You lost, was it Foss? No, remember, excuse me, Foss with yeah. Justin Holt. Axton or no, no, Link, no. Oh, Lincoln had Justin Holt. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the year I got hurt. The year before that, um, we lost as well too. But yeah. the year that I thought for sure we was gonna win, we lost by the points that I was averaging oh. that, year, that game. And so Damn. it was just doubling yeah. B Roy and just and no one could, could step up, but. So I guess it's better. Hotsey couldn't get it done. Hotsey, huh? yeah, Hotsey, you know. It wasn't Green Lake, man. Yeah, <laughs> Green Lake for sure. But man, just still to this day, we I see players and we still talk about it that, you know, yeah. but you know, it's in the past. I, I guess, mean, you know, as man. a kid that went from Nathan Hale, you know, you guys played on different days, so I'd always go watch Garfield, you know, a lot. And I was mm-hmm. just like, man, this is the best team I've seen. Right. You know? So yeah, I remember when you guys lost to when I think it was Foss, when they had uh, Mark Axton and yeah, he had Solomon Wyatt too. Right. Man, I, they had squad too, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess it'd be it'd be hard to choose one or maybe one or two. What was some of your fe- your best or most favorite individual matchups that you had in high school? I'm just, I mean, I'm sure practice was enough, but like maybe on other teams, mm. like going against Aaron Brooks or something, or yeah, probably the Franklin. Yep. Yeah, it's obviously, just legendary. That's just, it's legendary, bro. Yeah, going against those guys. You remember like a specific game that you, it was just like you were locked in and they couldn't uh, say nothing to you. A lot of the games were like that because it just came with it. Even yeah. before we went to high school, we knew that if we was going to those two schools, it was going to be showtime. Was, you know yeah. what I mean? Even before going there, talking shit, they're coming back to our, even the dances. It's just, it's just how it just bred. Like yeah. great, great matchups. You know what I mean? Yeah, some of the best. Yep. Yep. Oh, uh, so one more question. What was in the? Could you pick, pick one game you think was maybe one of your best games in high school? Might not necessarily be points, but one where you just you know. Mm. Led the team to victory all the way. Like it was like you just probably my um maybe my junior year when you played in we played in Reno. We played in the um oh, okay the Reno City the Reno City Classic tournament. And man, I just was going crazy over there. Yeah. So um you got the MVP of the tournament. Oh. Uh, we won. A lot of college coaches came. Yeah. And um that was a good time. Yeah. Were you on the radar much before then? Like um, recruiting wise? I was on the radar. Okay, yeah. So yep. it was nothing new. <laughs> Not really. Okay. Nah. Just basketball, bro. Yeah. 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 Spe- actually, speaking of Reno, um, moving on to college now, let me t- maybe talk about your, uh, like, how did you end up basically at University of Nevada? Like, what was the recruiting process like? Like, were, did you ever consider any of the other, I mean, local schools, I guess? Like, was there, was anybody else close? Um, Like, UW you? came a little like late. UW, Wazoo, were they? Wazoo, for sure, they came early. UW came a little late. So I kind of felt a little disrespected, you know yeah. what I mean? So I was like, there's no way I'm going there now. Yeah, you know, I hear it's, that. It's good. You know, I love you guys. Love it, it's good. <laughs> right. But then um, Coach Johnson, he had some ties here in Seattle. So mm-hmm. um, he went to Franklin. So that was kind of an easy connection, you mm-hmm. know, when he came to visit. Um, there were some other schools, but just to the connection of him being from Seattle. Yeah. Um, him knowing my dad. Okay. Um, just the ties in Seattle. I was like, oh, yeah, man. I'm gonna go there. Mm-hmm. Little did I knew he was, you know, screaming and hollering, going crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was still, it was still. I, I loved it. Love him. It was your dad. I was gonna Hooper? ask oh, actually oh. if you had a, if, if you knew of Coach Johnson before. It sounds like you, your 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 uh, your dad and him were friends before. Not necessarily friends, but they crossed paths mm-hmm. from basketball. Okay. And like everybody has the same story. You know, he's a hard worker. You know, he had LB in the nose. He rebounded. He's like tall player. You know, real active, but vicious. <laughs> 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 yep. Um, yeah, and then so your your freshman year, I think it's out, you had a couple of injuries, right? So you had, yep. I think your freshman year, you went out with a foot. was an ankle injury, was it? It was a uh, like a hairline fracture on my foot and your foot, yep. and then um, and then your sophomore year, you like you, you tore your ACL, yep. is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, for you coming like coming in as a you know as a freshman, I think you guys went to the Sweet Sixteen that year. So mm-hmm. maybe talk about like how you handled the like coming back from that, like the rehab. Um, how that how you experienced all that coming back as like you know a freshman where you haven't really been able to play a lot yet, right? Um, and you're working your way back from some major injuries. Um, 
for me mentally, um, it was tough at first, but once I got in the routine of you know the re the the rehab and the pool work, um, and I seen um, you know how my body was shaping into doing all those things, I was just on um, kill mode, man. I couldn't wait to get back. So I was just making sure I was on time for all the appointments for doctors and all the rehab and just listen to the coaches, you know, what they had to say. And I was, uh, I came back a little bit earlier than what they expected. Okay. You know okay. I mean? That's good discipline. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then, I mean, after that, I mean, like we all know your story now, after that you came back, you guys went to two NCAA tournaments. I mean, you were a two-time all whack player. Mm -hmm. um, was there something that, because I, I remember following your career, I think me and me and Charlie probably talked about it a lot, like how you didn't end up at UW. We were big Husky fans at the time. Mm -hmm. I think we were a little mad you didn't end up there. But we were talking about, um, I don't know if you remember this, Charlie, like how it, it, it came really quickly for you. It seems like when you came back from the injuries, like all of a sudden you were on the scene and you were like, you know, an all conference player. Yeah. Um, so was there something like, is there something that do you remember like a time where it clicked? Or was it just something like gradually that happened over the over the course of like maybe your first two years there? Well, like I I came on the scene, it was new for everybody who was watching, mm -hmm. but for like behind the scenes, like I'm working out every single day, like maybe like two times a day. Like I was just telling my wife the other day when I was knowing I was doing this interview, I used to tell her, I told her that before like every home game, I would shoot like at least a thousand jumpers on a shoot machine before oh, wow. every single game to the point where the coach had to tell me, Marcellus, man, we got to save your arm for the game. But I was just love the gym, mm -hmm. literally. So for me, the the clicking there was no click. It never there was never went off. It's, it was on like after five six years old. You know what I mean? Right. And it just stayed on. So you always had it. It was always, always, you, had you always it. it was just a matter of you getting an opportunity, huh? Exactly. Getting back from those injuries and get back from the injuries. Okay. Make sure I was hundred percent. And then when the lights went on, I was pretty much set, smooth selling. Ready to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so and then the other thing I was going to ask you. So talk about like. Um, you guys went to two two NCAA tournaments, right? Yep. Uh, with a Sweet 16 in there. Like, talk about that experience. I mean, just for, like, you know, us that are always watching these March Madness games. And right. It always looks so fun. And, and you guys yeah. are, you know, you're playing well in these tournaments. Talk about that experience just in general. Like, man, ma the, maybe favorite moments, favorite games, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, man, those, those, those are, like, life-changing, you know, moments, you know, especially if you're a basketball player. And to be a part of the NCAA tournament is, is, is very crazy, you know? Um, you get so many like gifts. It's crazy. Like you go to your hotel room, like whatever. Like let's say we're playing in um like Seattle. You know, you go to the hotel and then you just a bed full of gifts. Like one year we got like an Xbox, shoes, and then all the media. There's like this multi media from everywhere, from the the starting five all the way down to the the bench player. Because I just want to know every story, right, everything. Right. And if you're not mentally prepared to keep your mind on basketball and not that Xbox. You can get embarrassed yeah. and you can get, it could be over for you. So me, I just, I enjoyed it. I tried to take it in, breathe, understand what's going on. But I know I was there to try to win games, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so majority of those games, I played pretty good because I just tried to be mentally prepared, you know? Yeah. Let me. Did you, so did you talk, I mean, this is kind of a random question, but did you talk to somebody beforehand, like maybe maybe a teammate that had been there before, or like just another somebody you knew that had been through March Madness before to kind of have a handle that? It sounds like, I mean, just from all the distractions you're describing, it sounds like it could be kind of tough for somebody going there for the first time. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't talk to anyone before. Um, for me, it was just like, um, it's like an onion, like, excuse me, it's like an onion with the NCAA tournament. There's a lot of layers to it, mm. but the middle of the core is basketball. Mm -hmm. So all you got to do right. is mentally take away all those distractions and just focus on the player you got to guard, the plays you got to go over, what time meal plan is, dinner, shower, and just stay in it, and you, you sh you'll be fine. You know, basketball is a lot. Uh -huh. of, you know, obviously we all know it's a lot of mental. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I was gonna say real quick, going into like that, those two tournaments, um, were you guys a bubble team? What, what, like the day where you get your seed, like do you kind of remember? Like that always seems like that's a cool moment. You're like, I mean, we're a six seed, or, yeah. or like, damn, we're a nine seed. We should have been a seven. You know, yeah, like think, that kind of. If you remember those moments, yeah. Um, I remember the moments we was like always in our like um our big uh like lounge area. You always see it on the yeah, it right. looks, looks fun. And uh, you know, we never know where we was gonna um which way we we're gonna see, but we kinda know if we're gonna be higher to see it or lower. Yeah, yeah. And more majority of the time or two of the times we're like higher seeds. I think it was five one time. Um, oh, okay. I think maybe another time was the bubble thirteen. I can't oh, remember. Oh, so you oh so you you were like a and so yeah. you probably were a four thirteen upset. You upset somebody. Right, yeah. right. So 
it's a good feeling as mm-hmm. well, you know, exciting moment. And then, yeah, speaking of that, like maybe some of what were some of like the toughest matchups or like the most memorable matchups, I guess, in the tournament against like certain players, certain teams, yeah. anything that kind of jumps out. Uh, probably Memphis. We played Memphis in the tournament. Mm. Um, Who they have? They CDR? Have CDR. CDR. Okay. Yeah. Um, excuse me, some other some other players. Um, Dorsey, I believe. Joey, oh, Joey, Joey Dorsey. Dorsey. Excuse me, Dorsey. Um, yeah. He was a beast. Yeah. He was. Yeah, but um, they was all athletic, man, can get up and down pretty good. Um, I appreciate Chris Douglas Roberts. Uh, he kind of shouted me out in the paper. Um, oh, back he, then? Back then. Okay. You know, he was just like, man, uh, you know, Kemp is a great player. He kind of plays like me. He just tried to go get a bucket. And I was yeah. like, yeah, yep. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> he's, been, well, he's been watching tape. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So we Did lost you guys that beat? one. Oh, you lost We lost that one, but it was yeah. a good game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was in the Sweet 16? Uh, I think maybe before. Oh, okay. To, to go to the Sweet 16, I mm-hmm. believe. Well, man, moving to, you know, you had declared for the draft mm-hmm. um, after your junior season. Um, and then you came in. And and torched, you know, should have been we say you know two time, all whack player, but there should have been a player in the year in there, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know I'm biased, but you well, know, who, I, I who got who got it over him? Do we know the one time you probably should? Do you got remember? It. Um, it was Nick got it one year, right? Nick Fazekas, I know he's on oh, my team. I remember Fazekas. Maybe but he I got think, it one year. I think it was when you. Were, oh, I don't know. I believe so, but I, but I think when you were like a junior or senior, that's when you was really oh, okay. like. Yeah. When you was really going to work, you know, you're 20 points a game and all you get is first team and you let your team <laughs> to the tournament, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah. that seems like, you know, but, you know, talk about the NBA draft. Uh, you declared after your junior year and then, unfortunately, you know, you went undrafted. So what when, what was the NBA draft process like for okay. you? Um, the draft process was – uh. I, I like the draft process a lot, um, but before before the draft process and you're in college, there's a there's a website NBA Draft Net. Mm-hmm. You guys know about it. We lived yeah. on it. We were For on sure. it. All. He's done some reviews and stuff on there. Oh, that's mm-hmm. what's up. Yeah. So it was crazy. After my sophomore year, um, I know I our first game we lost. Our first, but I had like 34 in the tournament, and then we lost. But I was sophomore, and then I was like, damn, my name's on here. <laughs> yeah, second yeah. round. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'm on the radar now for the NBA. So, you know, I'm playing, playing. And then my junior year, killing, killing. And then I do the NBA draft mm-hmm. in Orlando. And what it is is, you know, they, they get your weight, their height, and, you know, doing all these these drills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I did cool all the drills, but I, I really excelled at the basketball. But um, I was just hearing so many people in my ear about, man, you should come back because you're senior, you're about to go crazy. You know what I mean? And it looked that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, getting hurt those two years and being older, they're looking for more as a potential type of thing. And now mm-hmm. I'm older, you know what I'm saying? Right. Now, in my hindsight, I would have left. I, I say my sophomore because I was on it, but for sure my junior. Mm-hmm. And and what even makes me even say that now is because my senior year, I did the whole process again, um, went to the NBA draft camp. After that, then you're trying out for different teams, right, flying right, right. all over the, you know, the states, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Philly, and Larry Brown, he was the coach. And he was like, okay, you had a good workout. And he kind of paused, and he was like, so why didn't you leave your junior year? I was mm. like, fuck. That's a cold question. In my head, I'm like, <laughs> and I had to make some up. I was like, man, you know, I just wanted to act like I wanted to lead the team, you know, mm. work on my dribbling, defense, right, you know, right, the right. bullshit. Like, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just left my junior year. Yeah. You know, right. but it's like, you know, I told him that and he's like, well, you know, we'll see what happens. Good luck, Kemp. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but I should let my junior year. Not like, you know. That goes to kind of show, yeah, they always want that potential. Once, once you're one year old, are you too old now? It's too old. No matter right. what you're doing, right. bro. Right. right. Even and, to this day, it's like when they, there's always a red flag for four year players. I know. And it's like, I don't understand because that, that kid, it means you're seasoned. It means seasoned. you have experience. Yep. And you can go in and help right away. You don't need time to develop. You exactly. Go in right away. So, you know, you go, unfortunately, you go undrafted, but then you end up summer league mm-hmm. with the Lakers, which I'm sure, you know, you was like, damn, man, I'm about, yep. to, play, I'm about to play with Kobe, man. It's yep. about to be wild, man. So, <laughs> yep. summer league, man, we're big summer league guys. We're, we're there every year. <laughs> so, talk to us about that, playing summer league, how that went. I mean, um, summer league went, went okay for me. Um, it was nice because I had a home crowd, you know. Oh yeah, because everybody from yeah, Reno yeah, yeah. just oh, yeah. drove down, you know. So I had like you know fans in there. Oh wow! But like 
I just wasn't getting enough playing time just to show what I can do, you know? Mm. Um, they drafted uh, that year, the guy played for Kentucky. I can't remember his name. But he was okay, he had short arms, but a guard, but he mm-hmm. did okay, but they didn't keep him. But I just didn't, you know, I just, that isn't enough playing time to show what I can do. Right. That, that was the main thing. Who was coaching that at Lakers Summer League team? Do you remember? It wasn't nobody like no, notable. It was like, like a former player or nothing. No. no. Okay. Usually those coaches be like assistants, yeah. assistants or something like that. Like. Yeah. So you end up signing your first deal in Italy. Mm-hmm. And then you're, you know, you've played in Italy, France, Turkey, Venezuela, and Spain. And you played all over the world. So talk to us about just playing in these countries and then just solidifying yourself as a player because I know I mean you played in all these different countries and you know you're trying to essentially move up and we'll get to EuroLeague in a sec that's next my next question but trying to like establish yourself because your first in your first season you have 48 in the game in Italy and Italy's that's that's good basketball mm-hmm. so it's just talk about talk about the process of trying to just really work your way up in, overseas yeah it's like a uh, stigmatism about like Europe basketball, like like it's so hard or like it's the one thing I know f- that I can tell you about you know Euro League is that they just, that they play hard, like they physically play hard, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean like they're like everyone's so much better than you are. Or right. Some might have more skill, yes, like the big man. All of those guys are skilled, you know what I mean. But as a whole, it's just literally it's just basketball. But it's everything around it. Like a lot, there's a lot of pressure because it'd be like. Mm, the president maybe gets money from a soccer and oh, they gotta yeah, win yeah. if they don't win yeah. then it, you know what I'm saying so it's a lot of pressure but for me I didn't, I didn't put any pressure mm. no, right. never I just mm-hmm. made sure as soon as I got over there that to make my mark immediately you know and they respected me off right. top you got buckets right away off There's top no, you know, just, like, just like it. in the crate no jet lag with the crates no nothing facts yeah, yeah. Yep. so all that you know you've had you know, man, double digit score, shoot in the forties from three, all you know, all these seasons, and then you end up playing with a legend in the basketball world. You guys are laughing because, but you know, it's facts. You end up playing this is Adam's favorite question during the during question. the lockout. You end up playing with the legend D. Will. And so how 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 was that? Because you play with NBA guys, mm-hmm. you know, your whole life. I mean, you come back to Seattle in the summertime. It's an NBA. And you've busted some NBA guys. And you've mm-hmm. given work to <laughs> NBA dudes. But just at the time, he was considered one of the best point guards in the league. And just mm-hmm. what was that experience like? And did you take anything from him? And did you like playing with him? And how how was all of that? Yeah, man. Um, like my whole you know career, I never played with a, a type of point guard like like D. Will. You know what I mean? From the way he you know, thought the game from the way he, he was like a player coach out there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he made the game so easy for me. And the year before, I was averaging like 20, you know, but, you know, every game was an easy, easy, you know what I'm saying? Right, but right, he right. made it so easy, because obviously he's D-Wheel, he's gonna be getting a lot of attention, and he just knows how to set me up on my shots, and mm-hmm. where I need to be at, and where I got, you know, the high percentage shots at. He just right. knew my spots, you know what I mean? He was cool. Like he knew it was kind of like your team. He wasn't. I mean, he was gonna get his too, right? But yeah, he he knew he knew it was my team, but he knew I respected him as well, just yeah. because you know of who he, if he is. But he expected me as well because he knew who I was as well. So I was gonna say because I remember that game. I think it was D. Will had like a 50. lot, fifty or sixty. But I remember on Sports Center, and your name was on there. It said M. Kemp, and I don't know, you had twenty something. Mm-hmm. I remember taking a picture of that and sending it to B. Sud. Like, oh shit, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, he's on the Sports Center. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, man. So. You know, EuroLeague, you know, you, you touched on it briefly, but you're actually one of the, I don't know if you know this, you're one of the first cats. I think it's you, Trey, Micah Downs. You got you guys are like pioneers for being Seattle cats to play in EuroLeague, which is essentially the, sec, the second best league in the world. So how did that, like, you know, that that's the thing. It's like, not that you, that you made it, but you went out there and you, you averaged like 15 out there. So... And getting 15, because I still watch EuroLeague to this day, getting 15 is a lot. You know, because mm-hmm. you know how guys play a certain amount of minutes and no. they, and there's a lot of ball movement. They utilize the shot clock. So guys aren't really getting 
getting buckets like that. So talk about that. Just you know, you're essentially second best league in the world. You're you're getting buckets. So just talk about that. Uh, for me, it goes back to that onion again. You know yeah. what I mean? I just stayed to the stayed in the core. Um, it was just basketball, just two hoops and a ball. Mm-hmm. And then we all, everybody has two hands, a heartbeat, <laughs> and we just hoop. You know what I mean? It now it can change obviously because teams have better players or not better coaching, but it's just basketball, bro. And I just took that everywhere I went, from little league all the way to Euro League. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I just excelled by by having that mindset that you know don't be scared. It's just basketball, bro. Right. So yep. essentially, like that Kobe mindset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. The mentality. So you know it's. After after Euro League, you know, there's a couple seasons. There's a few more seasons, but it seems like you were hurt. Mm-hmm. You were hurt. So when did you kind of know that you're like, man, I don't know if I, if my body can hold up anymore. Or if, like, when did you know it was kind of time? Like, man, I think I might need to hang it up. Even though mm-hmm. is your mind telling you one thing, but your body, you know, your body's telling you one thing, but your mind's telling you the other. Yep. Um, like my last season, like I got hurt when I was in Venezuela. Like I was um, – I made a move baseline and I was gonna step back and shoot or mm-hmm. hezzy, whatever. And the dude was guarding me and he need me in my um on my thigh. And I was for some reason I had bad luck with uh getting knee to my thigh all right. the time, bro. Just maybe I was dribbling so low or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that time when I got knee, it just my shit just buckled. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And my knee just like gave out a weird ass yeah. way, you know what I mean? And so I did the rehab again, but then I came back to no, I uh I came back to Seattle, but I my agent knew um named Dr. Andrews. He was uh in Alabama. And oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, he's a big yeah, time surgery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did my surgery on my knee, and, um, you know, it, I guess it was successful, you know, and then I, uh, you know, thought I, was, thought I felt good, but I got signed to the team in Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I went to the physical and everything, and they seen some, like, some, something wrong with my knee, you know what mm. I'm saying? There was like, it's healed, but, you know, you might re injure it during the season, right. you know. Those big teams over there, they're not risking that. You know what right, I mean? Right, they're just right. not gonna do it. It's too much money online. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I was just like, man, it's over. I don't want to even re-injure it anyway. Right. And so that was when I knew. Mm-hmm. So really quick, like, what was? I mean, in, you played in some of the biggest, like Adam was saying, like some of the biggest basketball countries in the world, like internationally. Mm-hmm. Like, what was life like off the court? Like, was it was it an adjustment? Like, what do you have a favorite? Um, city or country that you know you just love being in or yeah. kind of talk about that maybe a little bit uh man it's, it's 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 great bro i never got homesick you know um i engulfed myself in the culture you know with the food you know um a little bit of the, the language just because mm-hmm. um you know the coaching and the players are um playing it but or or speaking it but my favorite countries are probably like italy and turkey mm-hmm. um obviously italy um i love the food obviously um Turkey is like really Americanized. They have the huge malls. You can get any shoe you want, any jersey, wow. everything there with it. Um, and uh, that's where I had fun playing basketball as well too. Some of those great teams. Mm-hmm. You which any- place had the oh. which place had the wildest fans? We always see like the video clips of like you know the flares in the stands yeah. and all that stuff. Probably Livorno, uh, Italy. That was uh, Liga Due, and that was my second year. But the reason why those fans were so crazy is because um, like I made a game winner in the playoffs and. The, that we won the uh, we won the season that year, and they didn't go to they haven't been in a league one for like after I did that or before I did that maybe like sixty years or something like that. So oh, wow. it was like even to this day, like some of the same fans on IG like saying talking. So oh man, that's like, cool. Yeah. Uh, another quick question about playing overseas: Was it ever like crazy? Like people like you always hear stories about. Just cats are just smoking courtside cigars, and, or like you've heard stories about firecrackers, or like you yeah. know, was ever like danger in terms of like man, this stadium there's like we're under duress or something, nah, whatever. No danger, but okay. always like you said, smoking cigarettes, cigars, just like, courtside, courtside, just ashing it, and you, literally you like hit threes, stands, and he's ashing it, smoking. His... You see smoke, yep, That's firecrackers, pop, 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 look around, <laughs> go crazy, yeah. It's just, it's just normal over there. Okay, yeah, it's just normal. Yeah. Um. So now moving on from your career. Um. What's life been like since you retired, really? You know, I know you talked a little bit about what's what COVID was like, but you know, how you staying in shape, obviously, you you know, mm, yeah, pretty much just you know, being a family guy. Um, I make music as well, okay. Um, me and my wife, we also have a candle business, okay. So I'm just well, shout those out real quick, yeah, <laughs> put it out there. Are <laughs> oh, you about the candle with you? Oh, hey, now, oh, uh, okay. yeah, we got a candle here, which, yep. which I want to say, 
I purchased some for my wife. She's a huge fan. I'm planning on getting more once they ro- you know once they run out. So you know I, I got to support. Yeah, this is Entity Candles. This okay. is Pumpkin Delight. So we got a um, candle business. Okay. Um, EntityCandles.com. Mm-hmm. Um, you know to find our candles. Mm-hmm. Uh, music, Cool Breeze, okay. iTunes. Yeah. Um, and then just being a dad, man. Um, yeah. Being a husband. Um, pretty much that, bro. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? Uh, how did it feel when you got named to the uh, Nevada Hall of Fame? Uh, man, it was a. Uh, it was a little bit shocking, you know. I was gonna I, say, yeah. Yeah, I just got the call. Actually, you know, Jerry Petty, he called me. Oh. Because him and Coach Johnson are um are still you know still close. They still talk a lot, and so JP called me, and um he's like, man, you you about to be in the Hall of Fame? I was like, because JP's always playing around. Like, if you guys yeah. know JP, let's do this. Always playing around. But um, he's like, no, for real, Sal, you're in the Hall of Fame. No, congratulations. And so he gave me Coach Johnson's number because he we lost connection. Called Coach Johnson, and he just he's like, man. I love you, man. You did it. You deserve it. You know what Damn, I mean? Like, dope. man, I'm gonna see you at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So you know, I went by my wife and my cousin, and um, it was a, a, a warm welcome. And I was surprised uh, that everybody uh, said that I should have been in the NBA, and they mm-hmm. loved me there. And right. I can come back there and do you know what, what I want, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was there when you went in? Was there a couple other athletes that went in at the same time, or was it like? Yeah, uh, from the basketball team, no. Oh, but, but there was um, uh, baseball, okay. uh, mm. maybe volleyball, another football player, yeah. an older guy. Yeah, so it was pretty cool, man. That's cool, man. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on yeah, appreciate congrats, you, man. man. That's dope. That's dope. Appreciate that. Um, we're in the presence of a Hall of Famer, man. That's <laughs> you know. Uh, we appreciate you taking time, you and your wife taking your time out to come out, chat with us, rap with us about. You, you're telling your story, and this has been dope, man. So I just got a couple more quick hitters for you. Yep, yep. Um, you talked about when you was overseas, uh, you can get any shoe you want. And, you know, I remember seeing the pictures. You, you brought that heat out in yeah. every game. So what was <laughs> what was, uh, what was, a, what was your all-time favorite hoop shoe? I was usually hooping in Jordans, bro, usually. Man, yeah. look at him, man. Which one? Sevens? Man, you know, sevens? A sevens, the six, the elevens. Okay. Yep, yeah. Usually. Mm-hmm. See, that's yeah. man, my man. Yeah. And you, you, already know, you were man. always able to. I mean, I'm sure you just had a stock of them, but you were always able to get them overseas. Always. Yep. Always. Okay. Yep. It's just how it goes. Like you know, um, they find you usually. Oh. You know, what I mean, if you're a top player, they just come oh, find yeah. you, bro. Even people with suits, Italian-made suits, it's just how it goes on your neck. Yep. You know what I mean? That's what was the first pair of Jays you ever had? Mm. Do you remember? Nah, actually. Mm-hmm. I, I well, playing at Garfield, you guys probably got gifted some some, yeah, we, some heat for sure. We just, you guys like, used to Nike. have the shocks. I remember. Oh, you yeah, the shocks. Oh, yeah. The shocks yeah. is yeah. heat. The BB I'm force. Came out that, yeah. I remember going to Garfield games and you, we, we'd be playing crap at Nathan Hale music, and you guys would be playing E40. <laughs> like I don't need an iron. I'm yeah, already crap. Right, like damn, I can. I might score <laughs> 15 remembers? points with that. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are the games. Um, mm-hmm. man, obviously Seattle guy, born and raised. Man, what's favorite restaurant? Um. My wife's cooking, so it's oh, tough for a restaurant. Mm, I safe you. answer. I, safe I, answer. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm bro, because I'm like a conscious eater. I say vegan, more conscious eater. Okay. Um, and she just she whips it up nice. Mm-hmm. Man, I see it. You post it on your stories, man. I'm almost like, damn. Okay, yeah. I might want to go. I want. I might want to be a conscious eater. Yeah. Not vegan, but I was <laughs> like, huh? Okay. Yeah. This looks all right. But bro, you know, like. When we get this age, like as when we were younger, all those restaurants taste good. But now as I'm getting older and I have my wife's cooking mm-hmm. and I, you know, I've been around the world, I know that you guys are using um, frozen food. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, Come on, yeah. man. That's not yeah. fresh. Mm-hmm. Right, So right, now right. we just know. So I'm, man, I got to pay for it, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's tough. I got to find like a vegan restaurant or, mm-hmm. you know, try to manipulate it. You know, right, right now it's just my wife's cooking, bro. Okay. okay. All right, man. I got two more for you. So um, you can take any four, four players from Seattle. To the blacktop, play any any game, uh, any team from the world on the blacktop. What four are you taking? Mm. It can be anybody. You don't got to be former teammates or nothing. It can be anybody. Yeah, I got to take B Roy. I got to take Nate Rob. Okay. I like it. These questions make them think. Yeah. Uh-huh. I got it's hard to narrow this down. I know. Uh, and 
I mean, you got two more, so you mean, you know, B-Roy's at three, Nate's at the one. Kirk I mean, Snyder? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, the, <laughs> so they don't got to be from Seattle? No. Oh, oh no, no, no. We, so we're talking Seattle. Seattle, okay. Seattle yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Lot. Mm. And then one more? Yeah. I don't think it was a big man. I mean, a big man. Man, a lot of good, a lot of good. But see, ones. like some, of, I, I like some big men that are now, but they're younger. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't know them. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. but the, the, uh, what's his name? Pablo, Pablo, or something? Oh, Paolo. Paolo. Yeah. Paolo. Him. Cold. They go to Duke. He's yeah. cold. So bro. when I seen him, my bro put me on him because it's like I believe really even tapped into the high school. But my yeah. bro put me on him. I was like, wow, this guy's nice. He's right. real deal. They evolved now. It's like all the moves now. Yeah. Like has he stepped back twice? Like. Can we play in this league? We, right. I don't, we don't know. <laughs> right. These guys are making up all these moves, man. Euros. It's crazy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, last last thing. You know, so you, you're pretty much an NBA guy, but all the guys you faced from the from the town, toughest matchup from the town that mm. you've ever had. And not, you know, I've seen you I've seen you at those open runs. I've seen you in at Probably in see. He no. the, he's the hardest person to guard, That's bro. That's what everybody said. Of Everyone course. has said it. And you still know his game, and you he's know still his that game, hard. Right. But he's just so hard to guard, bro. And I have long arms, extremely mm-hmm. long for my height. But it, it doesn't matter because he's right. just too jittery. He's too, uh, 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 and then the shot might come or then my head might come. Right. And he's like, he's looking to embarrass you. You got to think about that. It's, he's a headache. Right. right. He's just like, like, put your hand up and hope he miss. Dang. But That's you what... know, when I get the ball, I got to come back with well, yeah. it. Right, right, that's right. Sure. To make me feel good. That's the only right. thing I could do yeah. <laughs> with Mossy. Damn. That's what all of our... Everyone pretty much pretty says. Much, pretty much yep. all of our guests yeah. have said. For real? Yeah. Yep. Micah, See? Trey, um, yep. Snow. Oh, yeah. they've, all, they've all said the same thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, shit. We was in the presence of a Hall of Famer, gentlemen. And, hey. man, like I said, we want to appreciate... want to say thank you for taking the time. Tell us your story, man, because this Appreciate is something it, we've been, I've been trying, man. You know, I've asked you yep. a bunch of times, man. Yep. So I've been trying for the last couple of years, man. And so I, I, I really, I'm, I'm humbled because you said you don't do interviews or anything like that. So the fact that you yep. wanted to come rock with us, with a couple of nobodies, man. Right, man. It's yeah. a, it's a blessing, man. We're humble, man. We've been big fans of your career. Appreciate you, bro. And um, so yeah, thank you for taking time out. You know, you and your wife. You know, best of luck with everything you guys got going on. For, yep. We're supporters, we're followers. Yeah. Um Yeah, definitely. So man, for Santa. Another shout out to the to the candle, to the candle business. Say oh yeah. Hey, you want uh, you want to you want to plug anything? You can plug Yeah, it? um our candle business is entitycandles.com. Okay. Yep. So candles.com. Got a whole new false uh collection. So check it out. Mm-hmm. Yep. And your music page? Uh music cool breeze Selly. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Hall of Famer, Appreciate Seattle legend, Marcellus Kemp for Sano, Charlie, Adam, Black Top Smack Talk, signing off. Blessings, y'all. Thank you. Yes, sir.